Yes. Welcome back to Red the Res. This is our special on Episode the Sky, Final Fantasy XV, the demo that was released with uh, Final Fantasy Aguido. Now, this is uh, the resolution on the mic. Red Giant's recording some Splatoon footage for you guys, so he won't be on this one. And uh, I'm frankly the one who bought it, and uh, I'm the one who really wanted to do an episode on it, so I made sure that I'll be uh, getting it out to you guys. Uh, I originally planned on purchasing the demo uh, with Aguido when it was released, but I just... I just, I, it looked like a great game, but I didn't want it that much. Uh, I, I just, I couldn't see myself spending 60 bucks for a glorified demo. But I really wanted to play the game. So about a, two weeks ago, I saw it on eBay. I saw uh, an unused code for about $15. Um, so basically, I was like, you know what? I doubt they're going to re release the demo to the public. And if they, even if they do, I want to play it now. And I don't feel like waiting the month and a half because I knew it was going to be at least um, until E3. So I got I got the demo and um, I played a little bit of it, but I restarted it just for you guys since 2.0 the uh, update for it came out. Yeah, and for those at home who don't know, there was a this was a demo that was released uh, with Final Fantasy Aguido, and it was the only way to get the demo to Final Fantasy 15 was to buy the game brand new. Now the demo is um, honestly it feels basically like uh, Metal Gear Solid Ground. Uh, not Ground Zeroes. Uh, yeah, Ground Zeroes. Uh, in that, it's it's meant to tide you over until the full release. Now, the weird thing is, Metal Gear Ground Zeroes wanted... I forget how much it was. I think it was 20 online, 30 in person, uh, if you bought it hard, hard disk. Uh, it wanted $30. Now, this, you know, granted, if you just wanted a demo, you had to be 60 but it was packaged with a full-blown game, so it's not really on the same scale as Ground Zeroes. Um, as you can see here, this is the main protagonist, Noctis. Uh, this picks up Amity Array with, uh, you know, in the middle of action with his group, his posse, uh, just waking up after crashing their car. Uh, I'll be quiet a little bit so you can hear some of that. Morning there, buddy. Eyes open. You know, that's traditional uh, stereotypes and tropes for his, his group, but uh, I'm not really complaining there. I'm, the big, uh, you know, problem that they that a lot of people have had with the party system is that it's all males. Uh, people, uh, you know, have looked at the game and they've noticed a, a lack of female. Well, from what they from what they see in the game, considering its history, they've noticed a lack of uh, female presence. So. Uh, they've commented on the directors of the yeah. game have commented on it and said basically, hey, uh, we felt that adding a girl to the pot to the his group, you know, his entourage just didn't make sense. And uh, to an extent, I can agree. I, I definitely, you know, I'm when I'm around my my best friends, you know, when we're following around, we just act besides acting idiotic, we just act different from if there was a girl in the group. And I mean, if there was a girl in the group, she would basically have to be bi lesbian or bi for like us to act, you know, the way we would if it was all guys. So I understand where they're coming from and. Um, they did cut Stella, who I'll get into uh, again later on into the demo. Uh, but they added a new female character, and Sid, uh, mainstay of the Final Fantasy franchise, is a female. Uh, is a female now. So um, you know, I, I, I personally, I don't see the big deal. Um, this isn't the type of game where you want to look at. Oh, we need a female. You know, if they're going for this type of game, you know what? Honestly, just let them go for that type of game. I do agree there should be more uh, diversity both in uh, sex and race in, uh, in all forms of media, but I don't want to shoehorn into a game that's obviously meant to portray a, a, br a bro story, you know, we're piling around. Now this demo in the 2.0 added a couple of updates, they, added, uh, they fixed some of the frame rate issues, they've made a giant T-Rex dinosaur looking type thing, uh, you know, fight, fightable, engageable. It, before it was just part of the scenery, and when you rolled up to it, nothing happened. Uh, but I guess they saw Jurassic Park or World was coming out, so they said we needed to up, we need to step it up. Uh, you know, I'm going to detail some of the f pieces of the demo right here. It says uh, a, an explanation quest has begun. Most quests begin with a party member proposal. Uh, our goal right now is uh, to raise 24,000 G. Uh, sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. Uh, to in order to fix our car, because the blonde one <laughs> ain't that the truth. Uh, totally wrecked it. Uh, proceed with the main quest to move the story along. Approach the sign with the destination marker. Okay, simple enough. Um, yeah, I don't need all this hand holding, mm -hmm. but uh, I'm not gonna, you know, get pissed. I, I definitely do need it on with the action, but uh, with the fighting, but I don't need it now. Um, the graphics look really freaking good. 
uh, for now. There, there's the uh, giant, you know, attackable dinosaur in the back, and I'll definitely try to roll over there in the middle of our demo to see if I can beat the shit out of him. Uh, probably can't. The game feels now. Now the demo. It's important to know that the demo basically has become a testing ground for prospective uh, gameplay features in the main game. Check. Uh, okay, cool. I'll check it out. Oh, it's a, a Behemoth, which is another main stay of the Final Fantasy franchise. Uh, well, this one's Dead Eye, huh? cool name. Uh, perfect amount of reward for uh, what we need for the car. So talk about a per, you know coincidence. Would you like? To, yeah, I'm gonna need that. So I'll show you guys some of the uh, training, and I'm I need it anyway. I, I barely have touched through. the demo, sure. but um, yeah, the demo itself has become a. Uh, I'm gonna try to talk while I play. Let's see how that goes. The demo itself has become a testing ground for future updates in the actual game. Uh, they've kind of. I mean, the fact that they, they've come out with a. Oh, the, Hey, that's a weird way to play. Uh, defend with L1 at the last second. Okay, okay. Keep your defenses up. So keep it up. Oh, I love me some rolls. I'm used to it in Kingdom Hearts, and uh, I they didn't they did not have this feature in the original form of the demo, and I really like it. I wish I could just press O instead of having to hold L1 as well, but I can definitely get used to it. See, that's what I'm used to doing. It doesn't expend um, magic, so that's really cool. Uh, I'm getting my ass beat, but that's because I'm so used to dodging with oh, uh, just an O from playing my Kingdom Hearts 2.5 remaster. Um, see? Oh my gosh. I'm just going to hold L1 um, so I can proceed further into the demo. Yeah, the fact that they come out with an update for the game is kind of interesting, you know? It's a, uh, it's a demo. I don't know if I said that correctly. Uh, the fact that they come out with an update for the demo is kind of interesting. Why would you do that? Uh, well, the update for the demo is, from, is for the fact that they are still making this damn game six i think it's six going on eight years six or eight years now uh, now this is, i like this attacking finally tilt l in any direction to change the way your attack unfolds okay i'm gonna try okay oh so that's like a straightforward attack and that's like a slice pay close attention in battle no one to defend the attack like is key to point okay now take on all right cool yo cut it out now I was holding, I guess, uh, I was holding L1, but it didn't really want to uh, dodge. Uh, let me get back to what I was saying. The game has been in development for about six or eight years, and uh, honestly, from the looks of it and, and the interviews, the game actually hasn't been in development. It's been in development hell, but it hasn't actually been worked on extensively until about a year ago, a year or two ago. Um, it premiered at... Uh, it was the E3 or Tokyo Game Show. I can't remember which one. I think it was E3. Oh, cool. I can warp. Hold it. Uh, it premiered, and then it was never to be seen from again. We kept getting, like, hush-hush updates. And then uh, everyone assumed it was canceled. I got actually, I won't lie, I actually got my um, PS3 for the exact reason of playing this game. This is Kingdom Hearts 3. And both of those ended up getting moved to PS4. So that's why I got a PS4. I mean, not the only reason, but still. So the game uh, just actually started being put into development. And uh, now they, you're use, basically using this demo to, to teach people what they, uh, what they plan on having, doing with the game. While I'm getting my ass beat, it's really hard to talk and play, I won't lie. Um, when Noctis exhausts, he will fall into stasis and state. Noctis cannot warp dodge, or he can't do anything basically. You will gradually recover HP. It's kind of a weird gameplay feature. I would assume you would Come just on, die, but the way they set it up is a party member can revive you, which is cool, but um, I don't know where the challenge is. I mean, besides getting your ass beat when you're talking about playing, I don't see where the challenge is. Um, but the demo, you know, it's a really cool idea, and I can appreciate what they're doing with it. It's just surprising that they had it only available to those who bought the game. And from the looks of it, it doesn't seem like it's going to be released to the public anytime soon. So I don't know what they're doing with it, um, you know, exclusivity wise. But I do know that they're using it as a pool to test the different uh, features in the game. So I definitely, the, there will be no update at uh, E3, but there will be parrying, par uh, one at Tokyo Game Show. Which, I mean, that's that, you, you can kind of assume that anyway with how, you know, uh, Square Enix is 
with their uh, Tokyo Game Show, they, they usually hype it, their presence up pretty big. Defend with L1 as he attacks and parry when the time is right. Okay, so hold. Okay. So right wing is about to attack. Okay. Now, I've noticed the game itself is, um, besides the obvious fact that it plays close to uh, Kingdom Hearts, and it, it seems to just take a lot of cues from um, American RPGs. It definitely seems to be trying to tell a different story from the standard RPG, uh, Japanese RPG affair uh, from, that comes from Final Fantasy. If just the fact that I, I haven't played many of the other Final Fantasies, if I'm being honest. But to my knowledge, you know, parrying isn't parrying isn't something that's that's major. But it's a major part of it. Um, it's more of you know that turn-based type action. Uh, weapons. You can change your weapons in a demo. That's cool too, considering um, you know it's a demo. I already forgot what they wanted me to do. What do you want me to do? Change weapons. All right. Um, but and it's definitely a lot of options. I'll give them that. They definitely packed the demo full. Um, which honestly, at this point, I think I should probably just stop calling it uh, a demo and just call it a uh, Ground Ground Zeroes 2.0. Um, I've noticed it takes a lot of keys from the from American RPGs. You know, I, I'm playing The Witcher right now, which we'll probably do I'll put a video up for that. I'm playing The Witcher right now, and I've noticed. Oh, cool! I did that. I've noticed that it just the two games feel kind of similar. Oh, uh, well, that helped me in no way. I don't remember any of it. You know, it, it looks visually similar, besides the giant dinosaurs. Um, it look, it plays a little similar, and um, I just get an American vibe from the game, which is what's what I was excited for when it was announced. Um, the American theme was prevalent when they announced that it was a, sp a spin-off of sorts. It was originally supposed to be a, uh, a side title in, in the episode 14 franchise, but uh, that never happened. They ended up just moving, turning into Final Fantasy 15. They decided they had devoted too many resources to it, and instead of canceling it, decided they're going to need to make it a full feature in order for it to, like, you know, attract the main audience, which I understand considering it's been six years. Um, gameplay is a little is is heavier than Kingdom Hearts. I'm so I'm I'm used to air volleying with that game. Um, I'm going to rescue him. It also seems to have a, a higher focus on your party. Which is, you know, odd to say considering uh, Kingdom Hearts has Donald and Goofy as your uh, partners, and, and that's a, you know, they, in the first game they had Trinities where you just you did attacks solely based on uh, teaming up with your with your allies. So they had summons, as per usual. Um, but this just seems like it's a greater focus on uh, doing, you know, co-op attacks and just. Uh, paying attention to where your allies are, you know, Kingdom Hearts, and this might just be because AI has, has wisened up, especially with this demo, because there was, uh, they've wisened, uh, they've smartened up the AI from version one to two, but just in games overall, since uh, Kingdom Hearts 2 was released, AIs have definitely improved Path to Die's Den, I don't know if I'm ready for that, because you just saw, get, saw me get my ass beat, uh, gather information, but games as a whole have started to, um, implement smarter AI, so I guess that's why this game overall feels like you need to be uh, more cohesive and more cooperative with the rest of your team. You guys coming? I'm speaking about helping my team, and oh, look at that shit. The monster design, uh, to finish my last thought, basically, you gotta, you gotta pay attention to your team. Um, the enemies are kind of, in my opinion, they're kind of a weird design. Um, they just seem to lack Stay sharp coherent thought like that saber what, tusk or whatever it was called they just visually they just don't that you see that and then you see those dinosaurs in the background they just don't seem like they should really go together um like attacking right now b besides me doing nothing feels very similar to how I, uh, I would attack with with the witcher 3 where i'm doing a couple of um slashes and then i'm getting ready to defend myself and then i have M mp i can use you know similar to the uh signs in Witcher 3. I mean, maybe it's just because I'm playing them back to back, and then, look, I pick up a, a claw, a monster claw, which happens a lot when you defeat a, like, a wolf in the game. And maybe it's just because I've been playing it recently, but the, it feels very similar, which isn't a bad thing. The Witcher 3 is a fantastic game. I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm loving every minute of it, but that just goes to show how much of an American influence this, ga uh, this game has compared to other Final Fantasy features. Um... 
I will say, last time I played the demo, it did not, uh, it wasn't as fluid, so I definitely can see the update in, uh, the, uh, frame rate. I'm gonna just bash this guy in real quick. Alright, cool. Um, just to give you a good look of, of the, the range this game has, uh, well, the demo form of it, take a shot every time I say demo. You have that giant thing over there, you have, um... Your marker over there. You have this city in the background, which I believe you can get to later on if you uh, improve your car, if you uh, fix your car. It's a very vast. Uh, you see, I like how they did that 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 effect, like as if it really is in the distance. The water looks really good. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to go over there and see if it attacks me. I'm good. I'm no, you can't. You actually have to have a party member in your group, uh, I forget his name, it starts with a P, in order to actually access that. So I'm just going to go over to the marker and uh, continue on with the demo. Another important part, which you'll probably end up seeing, if not in this video in the next one, is camping, which you have to set up a camp at night if you want to replenish your... Um... Again, it just it feels very similar to... Oh, look at that. That thing's ugly. Um... To Witcher 3, you know, in The Witcher 3, you have to pay attention, you have to meditate if you're feeling, you know, if you aren't feeling well, you have status effects that last, you know, um, you know, I think in game like 14 hours. Um, and this game is the same where you, after you camp, you wake up and you're like, hey, uh, what a wonderful kind of day, we gotta get to work and play and uh, get along with each other. You get these, you have these status effects and you gotta feel, feel good about yourself. You can't just roll out in the middle of the night and attack some stuff because you're not gonna be well rested. Um, the game. It just feels like it has an emphasis on survival, uh, which is another uh, what seems to be an American feature. And this is the, that was a special attack. I just wasted my MP for no reason. Sorry about that, guys. Let's see if I can get another one going. So that's uh, Tempest. Kind of sounds like a uh, water based attack, just in my opinion. And then it looks like it's a twister or a tornado. Or... So, you know, that's a pretty cool attack. And then this is the full thrust. Do I have enough? Yeah, I do. And that just shoots you forward, which is really cool. Um, what's this? Dragon, Dragoon Jump? Okay, so it warps you and then away and then it takes you to destination. This is a uh, ridiculous Drain Blade. I would assume this uh, takes health from him. Let's see. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I like that. I definitely like the change in color too. That just is a little added bonus for me personally. I think somebody just gave me a potion for my party. That's pretty cool. Dragoon jump, drain blade, tempest, full thrust. Yeah, so that's those are those. Um, and then I've used too much of my MP, so I gotta run, run around, and I can't use those as often. Yeah. Uh, I should definitely revive this guy. I think another party member did it, and I, so he's dead. So it maintains the. Um, RPG focus of you got to run up on an, on an enemy in order for the attack to actually happen but it has the gameplay of you know once you're engaged you're just you know attacking defending attacking like kind of like also like Dragon Age Inquisition I'm gonna check this sign real quick caution uh, marshland ahead the one aspect that you can tell of the demo is that um is that whoa it just got dark that was weird um it's like now nah, the game actually crashed so i just decided to pick up where i left off previously uh you you can tell the game feels a little mishmashy but th that's i think personally i think it just might be because they decided uh to include various parts of the game or into this demo so that people wouldn't just be dr rolling around in a drab area you have a collectible so this is a dragon scale and um the game will I guess implement a, fe uh, a treasure hunting feature where basically there's just a bunch of um, random materials that you can find and collect and either uh, ho hoard to yourself or just you know s sell to different uh, I can hop that uh, sell to different uh, shops. You can see the day and night feature. Um, yeah, I know how we're trying to find it. Times. I'm not sure what that is. But you can see the day and night feature. It's really nice. It's beautiful. They have a beautiful night nice sky. Um, feels kind of a fallouty. You know, you got the, the drab uh, 
shack here, the, what looks like a little wasteland, and the night sky. Again, tips off, tips off the to organization of the game. But, um, yeah, I'm going to probably wrap this up, this first episode up for now. Um, this over here. Let there be light. Before I wrap it up. Uh, look forward to more gameplay from the demo. Because, honestly, if I were you, I would watch more if you're interested in the game. Because, the, oh, look, another objective. You aren't going to get any information for the sort of foreseeable future for December. Like, a bit more time. I didn't realize there were just many collectibles. So, yeah. Um, it's always so hard wrapping off. You never know where, like, when there's a good point to stop it. But, um... <sighs> I showed you guys, you know, the day and night cycle. I showed you guys some of the collectibles to show you some of the gameplay. And I can't get too much more in until I proceed further and um, either hunt the behemoth or, what's it called, um, or get, you know, my car fixed. So I'll set up camp now. Uh, no, I don't want to spar. I want to I wanna rest. And um, I'll let you out. This is a good note to end it on. So, basically, look forward for more episodes. Um, get hyped for E3. Uh, enjoy this potluck stew. This is a major feature of the game, apparently. There's, when you camp, you get some good-ass food that they must have spent the seven years that it's been in development just fo solely focusing on the food, apparently. New techniques are not available in Episode to Sky. That's a shame. I will wrap up the episode. Uh, stay tuned for more. And until next time, take it easy. Hey, John, jo are you not there? Oh, oh never mind. Take it, I'll, I'll tell you to take it sleazy. Check it, Check out. it out. Subscribe! Subscribe.